and as from the truck series kind of I feel like uh, there's such a honey hole here for, for short track racing and you know there's a, a ton of fan support for short track racing in Wisconsin and I feel like um, there was a hole in what the truck series was missing so to be back here um, and representing Wisconsin is, is very neat so I think this uh, it's gonna be a home run for everybody this weekend I think of the uh, just the just around the racetrack and the energy is just going to be electric, and I'm excited for it. So, so the IRP truck, that's not the one you have here today? Correct. And so uh, that truck is parked and saved for which race? Uh, so that, that's actually the truck that won Bristol last year. So um, that's uh, truck number 79. We'll probably bring it back to Bristol, and it will be its next race. Um, we ran that truck at, at Richmond and, and IRP. So, um, that's a good bullet. So, um, if for some reason, which I don't foresee happening, if '91 isn't um, isn't what we think it's going to be, uh, we always have that truck that'll be uh, prepared for Phoenix. Any final questions? All right, Ty. I appreciate you coming. Hope you got one. Ty, obviously, you have a lot of uh, experience here, but a totally different vehicle here. What will you try to adapt to and what will be the challenges of trying to figure out the truck line and everything else involved with that? Yeah, you know, big difference in Lauren. Um, obviously, you know, you're adding eight, 900 pounds to uh, the truck versus the weight model. So um, I had the, you know, was fortunate enough to have a simulator uh, this week, Monday, the Ford Sim. And uh, the breaking points are a lot different. I way over drove the first few corners in the simulator. So um, the weight model here, you know, it races like a like an intermediate track here. And you're on the gas past past the entry, right? Turning into the corner, deep in the corner before you lift. And here we're going to be, you know, breaking, you know, probably before we start turning. So um, a lot of old habits that I'm going to need to break and figure out, you know, how to adapt to these trucks pretty quickly, of course. Um, so uh, I don't foresee it taking too long. Um, but just knowing the racetrack, uh, knowing where the where the lines progress throughout the race and how it changes as it gets rubbered up, um, I think is, is a huge advantage on, on everybody else. So I'm excited for it. Like I said, it's just so cool to have a home state race. Uh, I'm gonna have a lot of friends, family, supporters, um, people that don't normally get to go to a, um, support me at a NASCAR event um, that have helped me get to this point in my career. I uh, get to come here this weekend and, and share it. So I'm excited for it. All right, Todd, appreciate you coming in. Best of luck out there today. Perfect, thank you guys. We are now joined by Ty Kajeski, driver of the number 98 Coolers Ford Racing Ford, fastest in truck practice. Uh, Ty, you're in about 33 laps out there. Was this just a case of you weren't going to let anyone beat you in your home stage? Uh, I wish it was that easy. Uh, I don't know. I was decently happy with the truck, but obviously that's good to be. It uh, just doesn't have that love and feel. I think uh, a lot of us misanticipated the lack of grip we were going to fight here. Uh, Lap times were a lot slower than I think what a lot of us anticipated, so just trying to manage that. And um, obviously, when you have that, you know, at least you know, not a lot of grip, you're always going to fight something handling wise. So just trying to get the balance right. Uh, we went through quite a few things that Joe and I wanted to uh, coming in here. I feel like we narrowed it on, but um, it's got good speed, but we just need a little more instability. If anyone has a question, just raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you to tie I'll keep going here real quick. What do you think is going to be the biggest challenge tomorrow after being on the track today? Uh, passing. Um, <laughs> this, is, this might be the biggest single group track we go to right with Bristol. Um, unfortunately, the uh, the bottom grip has no grip. Anywhere where you see dark pavement is uh, literally like hitting oil. It's, it's, uh, it was worse than I thought it was going to be. You can at least use it, utilize it in a weight model. Uh, you literally lose a half a second when you hit it in the, in the truck. So everybody's going to be running up. Uh, it's going to be a battle for sure. Any questions for Todd? I don't know what chance we've got to talk to your other teammates, but I mean, speak up. <laughs> what? Your other teammates are finding the same thing? I mean, they, there's a map. Have any experience here? Are they similarly surprised, surprised in different ways? Yeah, honestly, I haven't talked to him yet. Um, it's just uh, high pace with a uh, full practice, and we're back here in an hour and a half, so not a lot of time to uh, regroup and, and decipher what's what's going on. So we got to make quick, good decisions, and um, 
Yeah, it's uh, like I said, I've, I've got a chance to talk to him. We all came with fairly similar setups, so I assume we're all fighting the same thing. Uh, a lot of trucks, obviously, away from the racetrack, like I mentioned. Um, I hope we can maybe get enough trucks out there where we can really widen out the upper groove to where, you know, the bottom is considered the, you know, the top of the dark pavement, and we can run two groups above that, I hope. Um, but otherwise, it's going to be very treacherous on the bottom of the restarts. I have a uh, yeah, uh, bearing LT and radio. Uh, it seems to me you have both ends of the spectrum here. You have no pressure because you're already on to the next round, and yet you walk in the door and you are the man here. You're the local guy, you know the track, you have all the pressure from one side and zero pressure from the other side. How do you look at it? Yeah, just what you said. Um, obviously, there's a lot of eyes on us this weekend, especially after our performances the last couple of weeks. We've been really, really strong uh, at Richmond and IRB. So, and then coming in, obviously, you know, this track is sort of um, in that category the last two races. And uh, one race, right? I've run really, really good here in the past. I've had great race cars here. So, um, yeah, the expectation, I think, is, you know, us to run well. So, I think we will. I, you know, we don't look at it as a high pressure situation. I think you know, winning last week takes a lot of that away. Um, just having that, you know, obviously being locked into the next round. So the only thing that matters to us is, is trying to you know collect playoff points for the next round. So that's either a stage win or uh, winning the race. So anything we can do to build up that buffer for the next round, and um, you know, like I said, have a buffer for uh, for that wild card count. You mentioned that you did the. Uh some sim work in, in Charlotte. How, how, how did that help? Did, was it a close? Did it help you? Obviously, it must have, since you, you know, fast so much, or fast right off the bat. I mean, how, how close was that sim to what you actually felt? Yeah, this is not, not very close. We were over half a second too fast in the sim. <laughs> uh, way too much grip. Um, I tried to, I actually tuned the tire for it when I went this Monday. Um, I knew we might have been a little bit on the fast side, but I don't think anybody anticipated us not being in the 29 second bracket qualifying. Um, guys were doing mocks um, that were, you know, mid 30 second bracket, so we were doing, you know, at least over a half a second quicker than that race room in the simulator. So some of the things that you learn, you can A, B changes and feel them in the sim, and that correlated, but as far as, uh, absolute balance, in other words, we're put the handling of the truck was not necessarily that close because of the, the grip, how we missed the grip. So, but nobody knew, right? We didn't have any tire data. This, you know, you know, NASCAR hasn't come here with a wheel force today. You know, we don't we didn't have anything. We just had a race from, you know, back in the 2000s to go off of. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just the guess we missed a little bit. Any final questions for Zach? Did Joel Shear have anything, Junior, to say anything that can translate it from the last time he was here, or anything to come over? You know, I think the trucks have evolved so much, and the setups have evolved so much. Bodies, everything is just so much different than the last time he was here. He, it's all, I think it's been over 20 years since he's been here, real close to that. Um, so. He's obviously he has a good track record here. Um, he's run very well here in the past, but not too much of that correlates. So there's some of the tendencies of the racetrack that, that do, um, but I think just his general knowledge of his short track package that you know, we've been able to develop over the last two years um, really has led us to the package that we have today. All right, appreciate your time. Talk to us tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh -huh.